The other week, I showed off my latest printed multi-tool design. It's a unique, customizable piece of EDC that's small enough to live in your wallet. I showed off the design process and history in the last video. This time, I'm going to show you how to source the parts, print, and assemble your own. Let's open with what you need to buy. Aside from the printed parts, which are just basic PLA, you will need several non-printed parts totaling in around $20. These include 6 M1.6 by 4mm screws, a craft blade, like a number 11 or similar, a Victorinox pen, a pair of Victorinox tweezers, 8mm of 2mm spring, optional but recommended, a flathead pin. You can choose between having either an LW4 key or an SD card. The final component comes from one of these cheap 11-in-1 multi-tools. There's a few slight variations, but all the ones I've tried work. Next, download the files from printables. When it comes to printing, the orientation is very basic. Everything should be printed flat and require no support. You need a fine layer height to get all of the details. I printed all of the parts in the fine setting of Cura. Total print time is around 4 hours. A final step before we can put it all together is to modify the stamped tool. Using a hacksaw, you will need to cut between the points marked here. The metal on these isn't much harder than butter, so this should only take a minute. With all the parts ready, let's put one together. Okay, and now onto the final bit where we're actually going to put one together. Um, you may notice I've already started the assembly with this bolt in the corner right here. The reason that's in there is because I've already glued it in, and I don't want to unglue it. The reason that one's glued as opposed to the rest is that this plastic is very thin, and I don't want to risk it falling out. So, once you put that bolt in, we'll go to the next stage, which is installing the ejection button mechanism. Now, I'm building the SD card model here, but the key model has the exact same process. All the steps are exactly the same except this one has a house key, this one has an SD card. Which one you build? Well, it depends what you want to have in your wallet. So, okay, with the two button pieces installed, we take a spring and just push it down into that gap right there. Now, you'll notice I'm only using one spring. You can use two springs or no springs. It just kind of adjusts how um, stiff the button pressure is. No springs does work if you can't source them, but it has a tendency to launch the SD cards across the room like a LEGO stud launcher, so that might be a positive thing to you, it might not. Personally, I like to keep track of my SD cards, so I'm going with just one spring. There's one more step um, before we close it all up, and that is to add the multi-tool component. This adds a ruler and a flathead, which I use exclusively for tightening tripods, pretty much. That's why I added this part. Now, you may notice that here, it's glued in. Here, it's not. But I say, I've been running this card for like three months. Um, I find that because of the geometry of the card, these rounded corners, it actually stays in very well, just with friction. So whether you glue it or not is up to you. I haven't, in case I want to modify this further in the future. But if you want to glue it, that'll keep it in even better. So... With that in place, we can then go ahead and screw the lid on. I cut this because it's just me screwing screws. Okay, that's all the screws in. I'm going... this is... that's all the screws in. For my personal model, I've got a red and green look, which I think looks rather nice. And I'm going with one of the faces that has this groove here. This groove here is so that you can take a card and turn it into a phone stand. Um, but if that's not a feature you will use, you could go for the face without that. And I think that that just adds a little more customizability. Um, so you can see there's, that's just got some sort of weird little symbol. This one's kind of vaguely nautical themed. I've got a few different designs in with the files and there should be a step file so you could customize it to your liking. But there's only the space for these symbols if you don't have the um, phone stand. 
So moving on from here, really all there's left to do is put all the tools in. Um, to begin with, we could start with the knife. Again, I've already assembled it. There's two printed halves to the handle and they get glued together with a little craft blade in the middle. Um, this is another room option for customization. I've got a number 11 blade in my one, but you could use all different types of craft blades to kind of add a another level of customization because you know the blade shapes look different on these um, and that's just another thing you could do. So that goes onto this pin and then there's a little dent just clips into it like that. Next up let's add the pin, there's a little hole up here the pin just friction fits into. The pin I use it for mainly cell phone maintenance for opening the SIM card tray and cleaning up the headphone jack. I think you're not meant to do that but never bothered me. Next up we'll go with the SD card. Just sticks in there like that and you can see when you push the button or rather when you don't push the button it stays in nice and tight. Push the button just ejects it a bit and it comes out no problem. That mechanism will never get old trust me. For our final two components we have the pen and the pair of tweezers. These both are the two things that really came over from my original Swiss card. So I carried this for a decade I think, better part of a decade. Um, and it, it's good, it's really good. It's just I don't use half of the tools on it so I wanted to make a reimagining that's better for me. And yeah, there you have it. That is the assembly guide. Pretty simple, really. I probably could have talked a lot less, but oh well, chose not to. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them, but that's really all there is to it. Thank you for watching.